Let Me Kiss Your Face, a miraculous ladybug fanfiction written and narrated by Mira Rose, with artwork for the opening and thumbnail image by Runes on Instagram. I have Runes Instagram linked in the description box. Go give her a like, give her a follow, all that good stuff if you use the Instagram platform. This is a compilation video of all seven parts of the series so that you can watch uninterrupted. Please enjoy this Mary Chat fanfiction between Marinette and Cat Noir. It's fluff, it's cringe, it's sweet, it's... teenagers. If you're new around here, hi, I'm Mira. I write and narrate Miraculous Ladybug fanfiction. This isn't a comic, it's an audiobook. If you're still listening, after finding out that this is not a comic, put awkward kisses in the comments section. Please enjoy Let Me Kiss Your Face, the series. Adrian Agrest as Cat Noir. Of all the surprising events that could have happened tonight, kissing Marinette Dupang Chang was not on the list. Adrian liked her well enough, but he wasn't Adrian right now. Oh no. Marinette had marched right up to him, yelled, Let me kiss your face! and planted her lips on his while he was Cat Noir. Sure, he might find some sense in Marinette kissing Adrian, but he couldn't figure out why she was kissing Cat. Had her feelings for him resurfaced? She was a nice girl, and he'd hate to turn her down, but whoa! The world spun, and Cat realized she'd flipped him on his back, still kissing him, only now it was as though she was the lead in a ballroom dance. And, just like a ballroom dance, all eyes were on them. He was pretty sure he heard some cheering, too. P princess Cat sputtered when their lips broke apart. What on? Cat got cut off again by another kiss, feeling his body weight shift as she pulled him back up. I owe you one, Marinette yelled running away with a wave. Cat instinctively brought a hand up to wave back before clenching it into a fist. People were laughing and jeering, but if he'd been a woman, their reactions would be entirely different. What a double standard. Cat retreated to his bedroom, funneling through the lady blog as Adrian on his desktop, looking for a reason why Marinette would do such a thing. That wasn't like her. She stuttered whenever he was around, so, so surely she wasn't comfortable around guys. But he'd never seen her so suave like that. It was definitely, well, uh, she got his attention, that's for sure. But why? Was it a dare? A weird kiss a superhero challenge going around? He didn't know but knew he wouldn't sleep until he found out. Okay, okay, that makes him sound desperate. What Adrian meant by that was he wouldn't be able to sleep until he found out, because it would keep him up. And, untrue to his luck, he knew where to find her. With his mask on, Cat Noir stalked his way to the Dupain Chang Bakery, scaring Marinette a yard into the air when he plopped next to her on the balcony. Hey, he said, face smug, let me kiss your face. Marinette turned pink and used her magazine as a face shield. It was odd to see his face staring back at him on the cover, but whatever. No one had recognized him yet. Hi. Her voice came out squeamish true to her multi-mouse identity. Hi, he replied, waiting to see if she'd explain or if he'd have to seduce it out of her. What are you... Uh, what are you doing here? What, can't a guy visit the girl who shared such an intimate moment on the same day? Marinette's face was all but hidden behind her magazine. That was, well... Um, did Alia have something to do with it? What? She peeked out from the magazine. Alia? Doesn't she? No? Huh. 
Then why did she kiss him? Then why did you kiss me? That was... You've got some dramatic flair, too. Who knew the baker's daughter could take a man in such a spin? Ooh, he'd better stop teasing. Marinette was nearly sputtering at this point, beat red and unable to make eye contact. Practice, she blurted out. Practice? Yes. You assaulted me for practice. Assaulted? She made eye contact for a brief moment before looking away, throwing her head in her hands. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Cat leaned on the balcony. He didn't mind the kisses, but he could tell there was more to this story than meets the eye. I was... It was clear she was looking for an answer. Checking to see if I had feelings. Checking for feelings? For whom? For you. (laughs) Me? He laughed. We barely know each other. Marinette made a face he couldn't place and nodded. I suppose we don't. So who was it a test run actually for? You've got a date you'd like to impress. It's not like I was practicing my kissing skills. Oh, you don't need practice. You're a great kisser. I am? The remark startled her. Oh, good. So, who did you assault my lips for? Marinette looked at him sheepishly. Adrian Agrest. Adrian Agrest? He's my classmate. Adrian Agrest? Yeah, you've seen him at my school before, right? You like Adrian Agrest? Yes? Is that a bad thing? Adrian Agrest? Cat muttered to himself. Now it was his turn to blank out mentally. Anyway, you and I have kissed before, so I just wanted to check if... Marinette cut herself off as Kat's eyebrows shot up. We've kissed before? Yeah. She shifted uncomfortably. During an Akuma fight. I'm not surprised you don't remember. With the lucky charm and all that. What victim? This was bewildering information. Ah! Marinette trailed off. Dark Cupid? Dark Cupid, he repeated. That long ago? So, I wanted to make sure of my feelings, you know? I thought you liked Adrian. Potato, potato, but she didn't need to know that. He'd think about that tidbit of information later. Yeah, I do. So kissing another guy is your way of affirming that? Well... She looked anywhere but at him. I might also like you, too. Too? Yes. Cat held the silence before feeling a smile grow on his face. Huh. Someone did it. Someone fell for him with and without the mask, without knowing they were the same person. And of all people, Marinette? The class's everyday ladybug? He felt his face grow hot despite the smile on it. Well... Are you open to exploring these feelings? Cat asked. Huh? Marinette made direct eye contact with him and held it for the first time during this conversation. But you like Ladybug. And you like Adrian. That was enough to get her to stop talking. What do you mean by exploring? Just testing the water for, say, a few weeks. What do you think? 
Marinette mulled it over. But we don't tell anyone. Not if you don't want to. Okay. She took less time with the idea than he thought she would. Great. See you tomorrow? Sure. Cool. Yep. Cat turned to leave, but got struck with an idea. One last thing, he said, turning back and stepping up to Marinette. Yes? Let me kiss your face. Brushing her bangs back before she could protest, Cat planted a peck on her forehead, smiling to himself as he leaned back and away from his action. She quickly covered where his lips touched with her hand, blushing like a palette from Sephora. Cat left before she could change her mind, unsure how to label the feeling in his chest. <laughs> Marinette liked him. He could work with that. Marinette Dupang Chang To say Marinette was embarrassed of her whims would be an understatement. Why had she kissed Cat Noir in the first place anyway? It was because she liked him. Well, it was because she was worried she liked him, actually. So, armed with some bad advice, Marinette kissed him. She kissed him quite dramatically. Actually, once she had the opportunity to do so. She couldn't kiss him as a ladybug, of course, because what if she didn't like it? What if she realized her feelings were just hormones once they touched lips? She didn't want to risk her partnership for that. Naturally, the only thing to do was kiss him as Marinette. What an idiot. She realized now the hundreds of other ways she could have approached this dilemma, and Cat Noir showing up on her balcony after it was all said and done only complicated things further. Marinette! Tiki exploded, digging herself out of her hiding place from when Cat appeared. What has gotten into you? You could have revealed your identity! From the dark Cupid bit? He doesn't have any memory of it. Sure, he found out he shared a kiss with a ladybug from an interview, but who's to say he didn't kiss more girls? He doesn't know the full story of that fight. Tiki grunted, but nodded nonetheless. Marinette would accept anything the Kwame had to say. She knew she'd been reckless, and now she was in a relationship with him? What was going on? Ugh, it was like she had secondhand embarrassment but for herself. What made it worse yet was, it wasn't a bad kiss. She actually enjoyed kissing Cat Noir quite a bit, but did that mean she liked him? Oh, what a mess. Who knew telling Alia she might be getting the feels for another boy would develop into this? Her stomach protested the idea of telling her what happened today. Never again would she take her best friend's unsolicited advice. Never again would she take her best friend's unsolicited advice. The girl ran a gossip blog, after all. And now he was going to pick her up tomorrow for bowling. Marinette couldn't remember the last time she went bowling. She must have been six at the oldest. Wasn't bowling meant for old men who wanted to spend the evening away from their wives in an unadulterated way? In line with her luck, Marinette had a terrible time getting up in the morning. Not only did the curtain of sleep blind her from getting ready, but Kat arrived punctually and sat on her chase as she painted her face with concealer and mascara, as though watching your date get ready was a totally normal thing. A half hour later, transported via rooftop, Marinette found herself tying up her wind-tossed hair at the counter of a bowling alley as Cat Noir checked out bowling shoes for the two of them. The clerk thought he was a cosplayer, and Marinette laughed off the Inquisition as she tied on silly-looking shoes that, if she were with Alia instead, would make it onto an Instagram story. But, despite the whispers of him being a cosplayer, Marinette noticed the wandering eyes in the alleys. The children stared outright, but it was easy to see the adults gossiping, despite keeping their murmurs low and their glances nonchalant. 
Strike! Marinette gave Cat Noir a strange look as he punched the air. What? I got a strike! Cat pointed down the lane. This isn't baseball. Wrong sport. Cat's smile didn't fade. If anything, it grew wider at her remark. You've never bowled before, have you? Not since elementary. A shame. Cat sat down clearly amused at her ignorance. It looks like this won't be a competition then. Oh yeah? The note of challenge in his voice evoked a thousand fiery bees in her chest, buzzing to sting him with her victory. It was just bowling. Surely she could win against a cat. You're on. Oh? Cat leaned forward in amusement. Your terms? What would you like? If I win? He molded over as her patience wore thin. A kiss. A kiss? She scoffed at the idea, although it wasn't a bad one. Say she developed feelings for him down the road as Ladybug. Surely she'd rue the day she turned down a kiss from him then. Marinette knew that wasn't good logic, but her heart fluttered at the idea, despite not coming to terms with the feelings she'd grown for this boy. You're on. And it's your turn. She picked up a bowling ball from the rack and turned to walk onto the lane, only to feel his hands restrain her shoulders. Is there something wrong? She asked, giving him a puzzled stare. Use a heavier ball. He gestured to a rich blue one on the rack, marked twice as heavy as the one she chose. Then I won't be able to throw it well. Trust me, use the heavier one. Marinette thought about it for a moment, looking down at the pink marble bowling ball. This is good, she said, stepping onto the lane. Marinette aimed, wound up, and launched the ball down the lane, happy to see it going down the middle until... It curved into the gutter, less than a meter from the pins. Her face flushed, but she didn't hear any teasing from Cat. Instead, he pointed her back to the return to wait for her ball. No worries, that's why you get two chances, he said. She felt her heart blush at his encouragement and nodded, stone-faced. Unfortunately, her second attempt wasn't any better. If anything, it was worse. Cat looked at the bowling ball he gestured to earlier, sighed, and picked his up from the return. Yes! He clapped his hands into a fist pump. Another strike! Marinette restrained herself from laughing. Grabbing her pink ball, she stepped up to the lane and bowled. Not a single pin moved from her efforts, and she groaned. She tried again, refusing to make eye contact with Cat for the same results. Great. He was probably smug and... I'll help you with your posture next round, okay? He said, stepping beside her to take his turn. He took his turn with what was probably perfect form, which irritated her further as he exclaimed something about a turkey before freezing and coughing it off. It's fine. Celebrate whatever it is you started dancing about. Cat turned to her, a bit sheepish. I've never gotten a turkey before. Like, for dinner? No, that couldn't be it. Another bowling term? You don't know too much about bowling, do you? Why do you like this? She said, hoping to flip the mood with a little teasing. Are you secretly a grandpa underneath that mask, old man? Why? Do I come off as a wise old soul? Marinette laughed, her heart lightened. He was quick at comebacks, that was for sure. You wish? She reached for her pink ball and hesitated. You said I should use a heavier one? He nodded to the blue one. Just try it, please. Well, who could say no to that jawline? Marinette picked up the bowling ball that reminded her of Luca's hair and stepped up to aim. To her surprise, she knocked over pins. 
She knocked over four pins. Unexpectedly, Marinette found herself giggling. Great! See? Marinette whipped around to see Kat's smug smile. I can do this! Five pins. <laughs> Not bad. Five? He jutted his chin at the screen. It shows you. That it did. Marinette stepped back to the lane, readying her aim when she felt Cat behind her. No, like this, he said, his voice soft in her ear. Goodness. Yes, he was Cat, but she kept forgetting that she might have feelings for this guy. Hypersensitive to his touch, she didn't say anything as Kat adjusted her shoulders and gave her instructions that went in one ear and out the other as she paid more attention to his breath on her cheeks instead of words for her ears. Okay, thanks. Her response didn't come out the way she wanted it to, but oh well. It did what she needed it to. It got Cat Noir off her back. She rolled the ball, barely aiming, and stepped off the platform, not bothering to look at the consequence. She heard the silence, recognizing it like an old villain. Cat had this way of using the silence. Instead of rebutting it when she was a brat to him as Ladybug, he would choose to silently accept her words without rebuttal. This was that silence, and she could feel it caress her body like a violating thought. Did I hit any? She asked, not bothering to look. She wanted a response. That's all. Another gutter ball. His footsteps reverberated through the floor as he left the lane. Aren't you going to go? Let's get ice cream instead. Cat wiped down the balls they used before returning them to the rack as Marinette stared. She hadn't been that bad, had she? Oh, fool. She should have been a better date. Why had she acted so stubborn? So, you forfeit your kiss? He looked up, mostly in surprise, she supposed, and opened his mouth to reply. His hesitation took her off guard as well. What is it with you and kisses? Well, they were good kisses. It wasn't what she wanted to reply with. But it was the only retort she had at the moment. That's true. She felt herself blush as he grinned. They were good kisses. Ice cream? Marin had echoed his suggestion to get out of the conversation. Sure, but first... He stepped in as she knelt to unlace her shoes. Before she had the time to blush, Cat pressed his lips to her cheeks. I believe I won the game. He spun around and offered a hand to help her up. Of like three rounds, she shot back, taking his offering. Surprisingly, Cat didn't let go as he led her through the bowling alley and onto the street, despite wandering eyes. Well, most people thought he was a cosplayer anyway, so it looked like a weeaboo on a date or a supportive girlfriend with her fanatic boyfriend. Wait. Boyfriend? No. Marinette shook the thought out of her head, already hot at the thought. Unfortunately, it confirmed what she dreaded. She liked Cat. Marinette, despite knowing better, liked Cat Noir. Oh, sugar and cookies. This was trouble. Adrian aggressed as Cat Noir. Adrian had trouble wrapping his head around his recent revelation. He liked Marinette. He liked Marinette, but he loved Ladybug. It wasn't as though his feelings for Marinette were some lesser form of what he had going on for Ladybug, however. They were different, and not in a two-sides-of-the-same-coin kind of way. Ever since the kisses in the street, he couldn't pinpoint what was going on in his heart. Should he kiss her again to get a better perspective? Or would that be considered lust? And what of Ladybug? 
Should he kiss her to test what it means? Or was this just hormones? Well, no. He couldn't kiss a ladybug without her permission. He couldn't do that to her. Ugh. These thought circles had him stuck in a goofy loop. Sitting up, Adrian decided a meal would make himself feel better. Some euros or Mexican tacos would hit the spot. As long as he's out, he may as well swing by Leon's cheese store and pick up some camembert for plague. It wasn't until he was in the middle of ordering that the thought of picking something up for Marinette as well crossed his mind. They were dating, after all, even if it was nearly quasi-blackmail. Ordering a meal's worth of food for her as well, Adrian paid, waited, then left with his order, turning to his mask to get him to the Dupang Chang Bakery the easy way. Except, well, instead of greeting her in some cutesy, cliche, shoujo manga-style way, he found himself staring at himself through the window. Marinette was kissing a cardboard cutout of Adrian Agrest. Huh. So, she must not like Cat Noir after all. Yeah, she must have used him for practice. Well, that stinks. Feeling defeated, Cat Noir slunked back to his bedroom with his tail between his legs, foregoing the cheese store despite knowing what Plague would be like post-detransformation. He nearly made it all the way before realizing he wouldn't be able to get away with eating this much food in the household without the cleaning staff commenting on the to-go boxes to his father, leaving him eating alone on the roof of a building just shy of the bakery sideline. If someone tried to paint him in the moment, they wouldn't need to try hard to capture his glum mood, even if it were sunny instead of a clouded sky hanging overhead. Marinette didn't like him. In fact, she used him. Despite his earlier reservations, he'd been excited at the idea of being something other than friends with Marinette. Did a date stand you up or something? Cat looked up, mid-bite and eyebrows raised as Ladybug landed next to him and gave his bag of food a shake. LB! He couldn't think of a proper response. You must be pouting if you can't think of some cheesy pickup line to greet me with. He flicked her a wry smile. You know me too well, my lady. I heard you got kissed on the street. Yep. How do you feel about that? Cat reached in the bag and drew out a box, offering his choice for Marinette to his partner instead. How do you feel about it? Huh? What do you mean? What do you... What do you mean? <laughs> Ladybug took the box, not looking at him. What do you mean? How do I feel about it? He chuckled to himself. Don't worry about it. I'm teasing. Ladybug took a moment to respond. Quitting so soon? Come again? Normally, you'd ride flirtations past the point of beating a dead horse. He felt laughter inside him, but could only muster a smile on the outside. Call me emotionally constipated. Ew. She bumped shoulders with him a gentle reminder of how deep their relationship was as partners. Hey, he began, knowing her answer but deciding to be direct. Can I kiss you? Ladybug's face matched her mask as she inhaled sharply, recoiling slightly in response to him leaning closer. That's a bad idea. Because we're partners? Um... Yeah, because we're... Surely she didn't mean to be batting her eyes right now, right? Because we're, you know, because we're partners. Wouldn't that make for an even better kiss? Years of tension leading up to a grandiose moment? It wasn't the distance, or lack thereof, that made Kat's heart pound in his ears, 
pulsing like a war cry to kiss her and win the internal battle he'd fought for not just the last few days, but also the last couple years. Oh, no. It was the silence. It was the ragged breath Ladybug took as her eyes traced his face, trailing from his eyes to his lips, then up his jawline before moving back to his eyes. He wanted to kiss her. He yearned to kiss her. But this wasn't it. This wasn't consent. Cat Noir flicked his eyes away, knowing she would regret it later if she succumbed to the moment. He shouldn't have asked. It wasn't worth risking their partnership. Cat. He brushed off her rasp, knowing he wouldn't be able to help himself if he saw her face again. Sorry. He turned his attention back to his half-finished meal. Cat. Ladybug tried again, placing a hand on his shoulder. I shouldn't have asked. Cat! Her tug was stronger than his core anticipated, and it whipped him to face her. Sugar and cookies, let me kiss your face! He was more surprised than anything, in an incredulous position as her lips pressed to his, but instead of returning the kiss he'd dreamed of, Cat felt a smile growing on his face as he took both of her shoulders into his hands. It wasn't a happy smile, however. It was a polite refusal, joined by him pushing her up and away from his body. All he could think about was the kiss with Marinette, despite the similarities, and knew what it meant. Well, Ladybug said, her eyes locked with his. That answers that. Huh? That answers that? What did she mean? Before he could ask, Ladybug stood up and took off, leaving his heart more confused than before, despite thinking he had clarity only a few moments earlier. Huh. Well, here he was, kissed and growing ever more flustered as he processed the last minute's events. Wait, he called out, knowing a simple plea wouldn't stop her. Don't forget your food. Surprisingly, Ladybug stopped on the rooftop, turned around, and came back, placing a peck on his cheek as she reached over him for the bag of food she started eating out of. And yet, as before, he couldn't utter a question before she took off, leaving him to the company of his thoughts. Ah, uh, Camembert. How on earth was Cat Noir supposed to know what to do next? Marinette Dupang Cheng. Ah, sugar and cookies. She liked him. Marinette liked him. Marinette liked Cat Noir. This is a disaster in the making. Surprised at the thunk from her patio, Marinette made her way up to find Cat rubbing his rump and trying to slide one of her chairs back to where she'd left it this afternoon. I thought cats were supposed to be graceful. She crossed her arms as she put together what happened, smug to see him flustered. Hey, Cat said, greeting her with a smile. Guess what? What? May as well entertain whatever crazy scheme he was about to propose. It helped distract her from her feelings for him. I want to date you. For real. Marinette couldn't form a sentence as she stared at him. Eyes narrowed. What about your famous crush for Ladybug? Famous? He cocked his head, then shook off the comment. Never mind. I like you a lot more. Even if you have a weird, adrian aggressed cutout you make out with. Marinette's forearms tingled as goose flesh rippled across her body. When? How? What? He'd seen that? Someone had seen her? Oh, no! She'd only done that to get an idea of what kissing Adrian would be like, but not like a creepy stalker fangirl or anything. 
She wasn't even the one who bought the cutout. It was a prank from Alia. Only for a few weeks then, Marinette blurted out, unable to think in the moment. You've been making out with the cutout of your classmate for a few weeks? What? No! I'll date you for a few weeks. The smug smile on his face irritated her, but she couldn't compose herself well enough to scowl. We'll see about that, he said, leaning in and pressing his grin to her lips. I'll get you around, Bakery Bay. Ugh, sugar and cookies. She was dating a cringy meme boy, wasn't she? What on earth had she agreed to? Bakery Bay, what even is that? Wait, no. She liked Cat. She was now dating Cat. She should be happy, if not ecstatic. But all she could comprehend was embarrassment that blanketed her inner pissed-off self. Had he not just kissed Ladybug? Hark, that dumb cat. Okay, fine. If he can confront her about a cardboard cutout, she could confront him about kissing his partner. Even if it was actually his partner who kissed him. <laughs> yeah. She'd ask her boyfriend about who he'd kissed. Yeah, it'd be fine. As usual, Marinette had everything under control. Adrian aggressed. Adrian stood in the classroom, bubbling with laughter as he waited for his girlfriend to walk in. She had no idea what was coming. Man, having a secret identity sure had its perks. Nino arrived first, giving his present a weird side eye before shrugging and taking a selfie with it. <laughs> if only he knew just how funny it was. Why is there a cutout of Cat Noir in the classroom? Alia asked the question as she stepped in, phone already out and filming as she inspected it. I didn't even know they made these yet. Wait, yet? Ah, whatever. Marinette stood in the doorway, face blank as she tried to put together why there'd be a cutout of her boyfriend, Adrian smiled at the word, in the classroom. Oh, hey, Marinette, he said, greeting her with a wave. Cat Noir wanted me to give this to you. He watched as Marinette's surprised expression sautéed itself pink, flipping into embarrassment he could only imagine. <laughs> Not to be mean, but this was fun. Oh! Her voice was an octave higher than normal when answering. He... he did? What? Alia chimed in. Girl, what did you do? Adrian grabbed the cutout by the shoulders. Yeah, he said you could use it for practice. He what? Marinette dropped her bag on the floor, running over and ripping it out of his hands. Girl, what? Alia asked, smug and still recording. Yeah, for like when you need a cardigan stand or something? I don't know. It was hard to hold an innocent expression as Marinette's nose crinkled, accompanied by an irritated pout. Wow, I didn't realize you had such a connection, Alia said, elbowing her as Marinette stuck the cutout under her armpit and promptly left the room. Unable to restrain himself, Adrian fell into his chair laughing loud enough to echo the room as Alia and Nino exchanged glances and began laughing too. Where is she going? Nino asked, peering at the basketball hoops as Marinette left the building. Adrian, was that really from Cat Noir? Alia asked, peering at him with suspicion. Yep, he gave a light shrug. Must be an inside joke or something. 
said he couldn't wait around for her and entrusted it to me. But why would he give her it? I don't know. A-Train couldn't wipe the grin off his face. You'd have to ask her. Marinette was late to class, of course, and while Adrian felt a bit bad, he kept shaking with laughter whenever he remembered her expressions. Ah, this was worth the earful he was going to get when he went to her place this afternoon whilst donning cat ears. He noticed, on the way into the Dupang Chang Bakery hours later, his face sticking out of the dumpster. A chuckle that hurt rippled across his already worn abs, and he couldn't help but check it out. Only the Cat Noir cutout was there. Adrian aggressed. Cardboard edition had yet to be found. Was she keeping it? <laughs> if only she knew how ironic that was. Oh, look, it's where you belong. Quiet, Plague. Behind a dumpster was as good as a place as any to transform. Claws out. Three minutes later, Cat Noir perched himself on the armrest of his girlfriend's chase, staring at her with intent. What, Cat? She asked, not looking up. So, what do you want to do for our first official day of dating? He could tell his question bugged Marinette beyond reason by the look she gave him from across the room. She sat at her desk, scribbling away at some kind of design. The cardboard cutout of himself, as Adrian aggressed, stood in a corner, shamefully disregarded after being a kissing prop. I'm not sure what a couple should even do, she said, her eyes still fixed on her drawing. Bet I can beat you in Mario Kart. You're just trying to get my attention. Uh, yeah. I like you. Marinette scrunched her eyebrows together, making eye contact with him for the first time since he came in. Wait, you do? Yep. Because I'm a good kisser? Her expression turned sly before he could read the reaction underneath. Yeah, totally. He kept his voice flat, but there was a possibility she might think him in earnest. It wasn't because, you know, you're charming or friendly or a spitfire or just compassionate. None of those things. How would you know? Call it a cat's intuition. She scoffed. That same intuition that led you to kiss Ladybug yesterday? He raised his eyebrows. She knew? How? Did LB tell you that? You could say we're... Marinette stared at the ceiling for a moment. Close. Did she tell you that she kissed me? But you asked, she said, not letting him follow up his question with some light teasing. You know, it's funny... Because she pulled you. Pulled on me? It was interesting, making eye contact with her like this. Marinette didn't make eye contact with most people, which was strange, considering how confident she was. Grabbed my head in her hands and asked to kiss my face. He went to the window as she struggled to retort and pulled a life-size cutout of himself inside. Here, he said tapping his cardboard bell. If you feel like practicing, you can use this. Where did you even get that? Marinette stood and tried to tear the cutout away from him as he danced it around the room. And how did you store it out there until now? There's no patio. The cutout, like myself, has nine lives. She scowled clearly fed up with his antics, despite it not being 5 p.m. yet. Mario Kart is fine. He felt his ears twitch. Great, he said, moving the cutout so she'd be able to see it from her bed come nightfall. <laughs> she'd hate that so much. 
I'll set up the console. Unexpectedly, the best moment of the night didn't come from gaming. It wasn't the jokes or the not-so-subtle jabs back and forth. No. It was when Marinette placed her head on his shoulder, drawing a dramatic sigh, and kept it there, freezing for a moment when she realized just how much of her weight was on his shoulder. Fighting the butterflies in his ribcage, Cat Noir tried to enjoy the moment, but couldn't. There was guilt wrapped around each delicate wing, flapping to the rhythm his heartbeat pounded. Words no one said but he couldn't help but listen to pulsed through his veins, moving anxiety through him in a way only insecurity could. This wasn't real. This is a forced relationship. She doesn't like you. You don't even like you. Why would she date you if not for your pity? Why would she date you if not for pity? You weren't even sure you like her. Shaking his head to clear his thoughts, Kat began his internal chant of affirmations. Marinette was a strong girl, emotionally. She wouldn't allow herself to be in a relationship unless she wanted to be there, however small the desire. His feelings for her was more than friendship, although he wasn't entirely sure what that meant. He wanted to be partners with her, but didn't know what that partnership would be like. It certainly wasn't romantic, but there was a time for flowers and a time for joking and smoking. He wasn't sure what this relationship would lead to, but he knew it wasn't a bad thing. Wondering what Ladybug would think about it, Cat Noir left quietly, making sure Marinette's head rested secure on the chase before he scoured the rooftops, looking for his partner in red and enjoying the cool night air. Still laughing at Marinette's face from when she saw the cutout, Cat decided today was a good day. Actually, it was more than that, wasn't it? It was the best day he'd had in a long time, and he hadn't even gotten kissed. Marinette Dupang Chang Marinette woke up screaming first thing in the morning. Okay, well, maybe screaming wasn't the first thing she did, but it was the third thing. The first thing she did was open her eyes to Cat Noir's smug, smiling face. Then she realized it was the cardboard cutout posed and lying down next to her. And then she screamed loud and long enough to disturb the birds outside the window. Her actions after such an adrenaline-filled awakening could only be seen as normal. Of course, it was normal that the first thing she did after composing herself was open a window, grab the cardboard superhero by the tail, and... What? You don't like the present? Marinette whipped around, more embarrassed than anything, to see Alia crawling into her room. Alia! Your mom and I were chatting, but heard you wake up. Cool cutout. Marinette could have died of embarrassment from the news. And of course, Alia already knew about this piece of recycling. She was there when she got it and was just rubbing salt in the wound. Thanks, she said flatly. I've got some awesome kiss footage, too. While Marinette didn't mean to drop the cutout through the window in the moment, her hands let go, tearing her attention between what Alia meant and watching an ever-smiling Cat Noir bend to the cement below. F footage she repeated. Her voice was higher than she'd like it to be. Yep, I should be paying you royalties, girl. It's gotten a ton of traffic to the lady blog. Great, now all of Paris could watch what was the singularly worst decision of her life. Ah, so what's the scoop? Why'd he give you the cutout? Alia raised an eyebrow and lowered her voice. Are you dating? Is there another meaning behind the cutout? Why did someone see him leaving here last night? 
Marinette gave her best friend a blank stare, not ready to deal with this much drama this early in the morning. No. No? Nope. Nope. Not doing this. Not today. So, like, not ever, Marinette corrected. She heard a pout from behind her, but paid it no mind. She still couldn't picture herself in a relationship with Kat, so how could she possibly talk to her best friend about it? What about a double date? Marinette found herself surprised at Alia's suggestion. Like, with you and Nino? Please don't make me say, duh, sarcastically. A date? As a group? Wasn't a half bad idea, actually. Uh, yeah. We were going to the park this afternoon. You two should come and we'll play a board game or something. It'll be fun. But, see you there. Text me. Ollie blew a kiss and left, leaving Marinette open-mouthed and flustered. Okay, a group date with Cat Noir as her date. She knew, for obvious reasons, and Nino would be comfortable with Cat, but some unidentifiable emotion ate at her stomach lining as she thought about Alia trying to ask interview questions all throughout the event. With jitters in her tummy, Marinette decided to contact Cat Noir the only way she knew how. Tiki, spots on. Adriana Christ as Cat Noir. Cat Noir pictured a lazy afternoon for himself, finding solace in the early afternoon thanks to a photo shoot wrapped early from his superior modeling skills. Well, Adrian's modeling skills. Same thing, right? What he didn't picture was a beep from his miraculous, alerting him of a phone call from. Ladybug? Huh. Was there an Akuma he didn't know about? What up, LB? Hey, uh, <laughs> cat? Strange. This smelled strange. Her voice was too enthusiastic for the light smile she wore. Where are you? He asked, trying to get a better view of her surroundings on the compressed screen. So, uh, your girlfriend of yours asked me to tell you there's a date today. <laughs> um, okay. She knew he was dating Marinette then? That makes things easier. He didn't need to turn her down personally. What do you mean by date? Group date. Pamphren Park. Okay, bye. What time? He asked. Too late. She'd already hung up. Hmm. Should he bring food? Was this a food date? He should probably bring food. Sushi? Sushi was good for a date. But how much could she eat? He averaged three rolls, but they were growing pals, so maybe five sushi rolls apiece? Was that reasonable? And just maki or sashimi and nigiri, too? There were so many factors, he couldn't decide. Better yet, he'd order a dinner for two, a sushi lover, and then some maki he really liked. Then she could choose what she'd like, and then... Wait, he still didn't know the meeting time, and letting sashimi or nigiri sit that long wasn't a good idea. Ugh, camembert. Should he call Ladybug back? But also, why was Ladybug the one contacting him? Had Marinette run into her or something? Huh. He used to yearn to meet Ladybug casually, but Marinette had great luck at it. Maybe they were even friends. Ah, his thoughts were getting off topic. He should ask Marinette instead. Leaps and bounds landed him in her bedroom. Him perched on her chase, and her staring at him as a tube of lipstick hovered above her mouth a stunning contrast to the double-breasted, collared romper she wore. You, uh, Cat began, realizing he hadn't greeted her. You look good. Thanks. 
You're welcome. Silence ate the space between them. You're here to pick me up then? Marinette asked, turning her attention back to the mirror. Uh, how could he answer without sounding like, uh, an incompetent boyfriend who doesn't even know when he was supposed to meet up? Yes. She didn't tell you the time, did she? We need to find a way for you to contact me. Yeah, it's not like I can show up in your bedroom like something out of a fever dream. He didn't have to look up to see the smug smile she donned, now with lipstick. Your outfit looks nice, he said, not sure how to continue. A fashion version of combat boots paired with that romper and black tights? He nearly needed to advert his gaze. Thanks. I figured we should match. Chuckling, Cat Noir tugged on his belt. It's not Halloween. People would look at you funny if you wore cat ears and a tail. And we aren't American either, which is a shame because celebrating Halloween sounds like fun, don't you think? I mean, so is beating you at literally any Mario game, but I digress. She scowled and turned her attention back to Mascara. We're going to the park with Nino and Alia. Alia and Nino? Yeah, for games. Like, board games? Yep. Don't know which ones, though. Oregon Trail? Oregon what? Marinette looked up, mid-brush, which resulted in small black streaks across her forehead. Oops. Nino mentioned it the other day. Said it was pretty savage. You talked to Nino? <sighs> Oops. You aren't the only one who runs into me on the street. Huh. And that was that. Phew. Bullet dodged. With a bit of small talk, Cat Noir and Marinette made their way to the park, swinging by a sushi bar to pick up a rather large to-go order first, which added on more time than planned thanks to impromptu can-I-have-a-photo moments. And then there they were, on a date with their friends, laughing and chiding and shooting the breeze. Cat Noir died of dysentery three times, and they as a team were unable to make it to Oregon, but it was fun to see their group perish one by one. Surprisingly, Marinette was the first one who got into their Oregon Trail games the most, fueled by being the first to die in their first game. He liked how they all had to work together, despite not being able to be successful in their mission. So, this is what dating is like, Cat muttered, mostly to himself. He didn't realize the table went quiet until he looked up to see them staring. What, are you thinking of dipping out on my girl, Marinette? Because I don't want to hurt you, Cat, but I can take on you and your tight super suit any day, Alia said pointing her chopsticks at him. He laughed, knowing she meant it, and shook his head. No, no, it's... <laughs> he looked over at Marinette, wrapping his hand around hers and caressing it gently with his thumb. I'm actually thinking the opposite. The opposite? Marinette questioned. Yeah. It was like the others didn't exist when he made eye contact with her. I'm hoping I can share days like this with you long into the future. The tips of her ears, pink and subtle, contrasted her cool demeanor. Well, she said, letting a playful grin slide into her expression. Only if you let me kiss your face. The bold remark wasn't what he expected from her in front of their friends, but this was the same girl who kissed him on a street full of strangers, so why should he be surprised? Neglecting the people and place in the background, Cat Noir led her chin to his, closing his eyes as he hovered above her lips for just a moment, then not at all. Pulling away slowly, light-headed from the tingling in his lips, 
Cat Noir couldn't help but gaze at Marinette and beam. So what if the others were watching? So what if this would be on Gossip Blogs tomorrow? This was everything he'd looked for. The whole package. And it'd been under his nose the whole time. Smiling in the sunshine, Cat Noir warmed himself with the light and the company. Who knew a week ago he'd have this? Sure, there was more to do. He was having an excellent date with his friend group without any of them knowing it was him, but something told him he could trust them with his identity. But that would have to wait for another time. And to think, this all started because Marinette wanted to kiss his face. Thank you so much for making it to the end of Let Me Kiss Your Face. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're still listening, comment, I made it, in the comment section. It helps the YouTube algorithm and helps to spread the video so other people can enjoy it as well. If you haven't subscribed, you should do so. I've got tons more Miraculous Ladybug content on this channel. And so if you like Miraculous Ladybug, subscribe. If you like audiobooks, subscribe. If you don't like either of those things, I'm a little confused how you made it to the end of this video. Anyway, my cat is struggling to get out of my arms because I'm holding her because she was meowing when I tried to record this. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!